Hey everybody, Cole here with Classic Mini DIY, and on today's episode, we are gonna be taking a trip down memory lane and working on this beautiful red Classic Mini Pup that got the Super 998 a few years ago on my channel. Today, we are gonna be replacing the cones that are on this car with a brand new set of Mini Spares Evo cones, so you won't wanna miss it. Let's get to it. All right, as I said, on today's episode, we are gonna be doing some regular maintenance on this beautiful red classic mini pup, mini pickup. Now, many of you will probably remember this car. This car got a Super 998 that I built at my old shop and has still been running, chugging away in this little classic mini. And that Super 998, for those of you who don't know, is a 998 with pocketed block clearances and a 1275 head on it to really pull out all of the extra performance you can out of a 998. And it has been running beautifully with regular maintenance and very happy with how that turned out. If you haven't seen that series, I would strongly recommend you go check it out. It was a really good one and that'll be popping up in the corner somewhere. Now, on today's episode, we're gonna be tackling something that needs to be done on a lot of minis that have been around for a while and require some regular maintenance. So to get started, let's talk about the Classic Mini suspension. It's a bit unusual. For those of you who haven't seen a Classic Mini suspension, or maybe you haven't worked on yours yet, it has some kind of unique characteristics that set it aside and set it apart from modern cars. Namely, instead of springs, your standard traditional metal coil spring, it uses something called a suspension cone. Now these cones are made out of rubber. And as you can imagine, over the years, rubber degrades, it gets compressed, and then gets stuck in that compressed state, and ultimately makes the ride pretty miserable and pretty unpleasant. Now the ride in this car is not by any stretch of the imagination miserable, but it is starting to get rigid, it's starting to get uncomfortable, and when you hit bumps and just driving around, it's just a little bit more bouncy than a classic Mini should be. So that is where new cones come in. Now, before we get into how to take all of this apart, which I'm gonna show you guys, how to remove the old cones, how to put new ones in, and how to install high lows, I do wanna take an opportunity to show you guys what makes these cones kind of special and how they're different, but also just in general, how they work. All right, so if you've ever been on a mini parts website, you've probably seen a picture that looks something like this. Now, this is a collection of your classic mini suspension cones and a collection of high lows. These go in your suspension cones and allow you to adjust the ride height with these nuts right here. And there are tons of variations of these. There are ones that are made with proprietary knuckle joints from Mini Sport. There are different types of cones, such as ones from Molten Smoother Ride. Um, these in particular are the Mini Spares Evo lineup, which is a variation of their parts, which they kind of dub the Evolution parts. And these are upgraded, uprated, or modernized versions of older parts. They do things like this for helical gear sets. They do this for uh, oil pumps. And in our case, they do this also for suspension cones. Now, the rubber material on these Evo cones is just a higher quality of rubber, but they also perform much better than other ones on the market. Now, this job is one of those jobs where you go to replace your cones, and since you're in your suspension area, it's a good opportunity to replace a lot of other stuff, namely bushings, knuckle joints, and in our case, also these high lows. All of this can be done while it's apart and it saves you a lot of time to go ahead and tackle it all at once. Now, before we get into the meat and potatoes of everything, I do wanna take an opportunity to do a bit of a Q&A on this. There are some common questions that I get a lot around suspension systems and what you should do, what should I put on my car, what shock should I get, what, what, should, what cone should I get, all of these different things. And I think it's a good opportunity to get through some of these questions and help you guys kind of understand what might be best for your car. Now for the first question, let's get it out of the way because I know a lot of you are probably busy typing this question in the comment section below. 
Cole, why are you using rubber cones on this car instead of coil springs? And the short answer to that is that one, this car, this mini pickup is not my car. And the owner of this car, who is a really good friend of mine, um, prefers the rubber cones, likes to keep it stock, likes to keep it kind of OG. And even these high lows are kind of an OG mod. That's, and it's something pretty ordinary to put on and modify an old classic mini. Now you guys probably remember that video from four or five, maybe six years ago, where I installed coil springs on my car. That coil spring conversion is still running absolutely perfectly. I love the coil springs on my car. I like how it rides. I like the reliability. They don't start to droop over time like rubber cones do. Granted, rubber cones do last a long time. They do require replacement and maintenance more frequently than a coil spring would. All of that to say, I'm very happy with them. Now, there are tons of horror stories about why people shouldn't use coil springs. Oh my God, your whole car is gonna explode. You're gonna drop a coil spring and the subframe is gonna blast apart or your high low is gonna break. The thing about those issues and the thing about those pictures that everybody loves to post on the internet is that they are, in my opinion, situations where those coil springs were improperly installed. Now, installing those coil springs requires a very specific set of correct parts. If you do the job correctly, you are going to get good results. If you do a job improperly, you're likely going to get improper results. So the short and sweet of it is, coil springs do require an enlarged bump stop, a buffer that goes underneath the top arm on the front of the suspension. Those coil springs also require a high low that is made for coil springs. You don't want to be using these standard high lows on those coil springs. They make specific sets for the coil springs so that they seat properly. And then finally, coil springs are not meant to be run on incredibly low cars. If you want to run really, really low on your car, I strongly recommend you pick up rubber cones. If you want to run a relatively low, but kind of more reasonable height on your classic mini, you can do cones, you can do coil springs. You're going to be happy with either of those. But the main thing is that they get installed properly. There should be no situation where that coil spring, when at full droop, basically your wheel hanging, if you were to go airborne, your wheel was hanging off of the, off of the car and nothing underneath it. There should be no situation where that coil spring can come unseated. If you lift up your car, your wheels are hanging and the coil spring has movement, it means your car is too low and you need to adjust your high-low up to take up that slack in the coil spring. But those are the three main things about installing coil springs. So the next question I often get is which set of rubber cones should I get? There's a few different companies that make different cones for cars and in my opinion, most of them are pretty good. Um, the Mini Spares Evo set that we're holding right here, in my opinion, are the best ones that are on the market. They provide you the best performant ride while also kind of balancing the comfort of a classic Mini, as comfortable as it can be. Then the next ones I would say is the kind of standard OEM replacement that Mini Spares sells. They are, basically they look identical to this, but they are a OEM spec. So what you would have seen on the cars back in the 60s and 70s. And then finally, there's another set called the Molten Smoother Ride. These are really soft rubber cones and the ride is very smooth and very, very supple and soft, but it comes at the expense of being able to carry a reasonable amount of weight in the back of the car. And unfortunately, when you run them really low, you're more likely to kind of bottom out your wheels in your wheel wells. So those cones, I would recommend to somebody who just wants a nice touring car, but maybe isn't gonna be just blasting the mountain roads or you know beating the heck out of the car. So this also is kind of adjacent, but your shock absorbers do have impact on all of these things, but it is not what determines whether your car is gonna rub or have any sort of clearancing issues, specifically with the Molten setup. So with all of that out of the way, those are just a few questions that I get a lot on my channel and in comments and all of those things. So I wanted to get those out of the way. If you have any more comments, make sure you post them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. But what we need to do now is get the old cones out of the car and then start putting in new ones. 
And what I would recommend doing is starting with the rear of the car because this is a relatively time consuming job. And by starting at the rear, you're starting at the kind of easier set to work on and moving from there will allow you to kind of segment the job up if you need to over multiple days. So let's jump to the back of the car. I'm gonna show you how to do this and take everything out. It's a pretty easy job, but there's some nuance. Now, first up, let's talk about what you're greeted with when you take the back wheel off so you can kind of see the rear suspension for the first time. We're looking at the drum brake on the rear hub. We're on the right side of the car. You've got your shock absorber here, your radius arm here, your old rubber cone right back here, and then your rear trumpet, which this is the original rear trumpet, so that's probably gonna make this a little bit harder since those tend to be basically welded in from all of the years of use. Down here, we have our knuckle joint. That'll get replaced as well. But in order to get all of this stuff off, the first thing we need to do is disconnect our rear shock absorber. Now on a mini pickup, it's actually quite easy. There is a nut on the top side of your shock absorber here that's in the truck bed, and that's visible and accessible on both sides. In a saloon, you're gonna have access to this shock absorber on the right side. However, you are going to need to remove the fuel tank on the left side to get to the shock absorber on that side. Now the reason we have to get to that top nut is because we need this to come free so that this can sag all the way down. Now there won't need to be any other removals down here aside from that bolt right there. And then we might need to take the bolt out of the bottom as well to kind of just move this out of the way. So I'm gonna loosen that up. You guys will see this kind of drop down a little bit more and then we'll be able to get to the cone back here. Now the nice thing about what we're doing with this job right here is that we don't have to save or protect anything that we have here. So this cone, this trumpet and even the knuckle down inside the radius arm can all be kind of, well, damaged. In a worst case scenario, we can also cut this rubber cone um, if it seems like it's going to be necessary. So as you guys can see, I kind of just opted to go ahead and take the easy route with this side. Now, these trumpets are notorious for being very difficult to get out. Um, they also like to hold the debris and gunk inside them. And so these will often get seized down at the bottom here where this knuckle joint attaches. See if I can get that in view. And then on the cone side, the cones will also get seized to the top of the trumpet. All of this, and the reason I just decided to go ahead and cut it, is because we are replacing it with high lows and it's just simply the easier route to take. So, next thing that we need to do is get the plastic nylon cup out of the bottom of this radius arm. So to do that, we are going to jack this back up and then we're gonna go ahead and get that out. All right, so next up, we are gonna be getting this little plastic cup out of here. And I can tell you that doing this is incredibly difficult. It is always difficult to get this out, um, no matter how long it's been in there. Honestly, I've had some that have gotten hard to get out, even from just like 100 miles on them. If you think about it, all of the weight of the rear of the car is inside these knuckles, and it's just driving that deeper and deeper in there. So the best thing I can recommend, and I'm gonna do my best to film this, but if you don't see any footage of this, it's because there is no easy way to get it. Basically, I like to take a pry bar with a hammering end on one side, and I like to just kind of hammer at this and kind of drive it out. Um, heat does help as well. And then kind of, if you can, get a set of vice grips on it and tug and rotate uh, as a, as best you can. This is one of those things that just requires a good bit of elbow grease and you just gotta get in there and do it. All right, so as you can see, we've got our nylon cup removed. Now, there are a ton of different like pro tips on how to get this out. And again, I said that it is mostly, you know, elbow grease to get the sucker out. But one thing that helped a lot is get yourself a tiny little torch. It doesn't have to be super high heat and literally just get that sucker hot, get it hot and what it'll do is 
in most situations on the back side of this knuckle here, you're gonna get a breakup of the bonds that are bonding this to the metal on the outside. And hopefully it'll allow it to pull out pretty nicely. It's not always the case, but if you're lucky, you'll get it out. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and clean up that hole. When we put our new set in, we wanna make sure that in the future, it's gonna allow us to easily get it out. You know, a good set of anti-seize down in here is a good idea and at minimum, get that rusty, crusty stuff out. So now we've got a good coating of anti-seize in there, and the next step is to lower this radius arm back down, and we're gonna install our new high-low, as well as our new cone. Now before we get the new cones in, I did wanna take just a brief minute to show you guys, this is what I'm talking about with the new cone versus the old cone. You can see just the trumpet itself is gonna be taller, but you can see the baseline. Look at how much has compressed on that old cone. Now this is a rear cone and the rears tend to compress a little bit less than the fronts. They have a lot less weight on them all the time. But now that we've got the rear out, you got a good look at it and you can see just how this is starting to compress. This has become a little bit dry rotted and that just, it's ready to be replaced and get a nice smooth ride in our car again. So the next step, we're gonna take this, your new cone, your new high-low, one of the new trumpets, you can see it's a brand new style, no big literal trumpet anymore. That goes in the top there. And last, we're gonna take our brand new knuckle and that's gonna go in the top of this trumpet or rather the end of the trumpet. So let's hop back to the back and I'll show you guys how to put that in. Now, like with most jobs on this car, there are a lot of different ways to accomplish it and everyone has a slightly different method. But now some people will say, go ahead and put the knuckle in down here at the bottom and then put your trumpet and cone in. I like to do it all at once. So I put this in the end. So I put this in the end of my trumpet and the cone, the whole assembly, and I'm gonna feed it into place. And then I'll lift this back up to kind of push it and seat it into place. One other place that I would recommend putting some anti-seize is on this post where it goes into the trumpet. Same thing around the base of the trumpet where it touches the cone. One more thing I almost forgot is that you are also going to want to wind this all the way in. So you're basically lowering the car as far as it can go, as low as it can go. And the reason we're going to do that and leave this nut and leave this lock nut loose is so that we can adjust the height easily and get it up to the ride height that we like, whether you want it really low or maybe you would like it to be really high and like a monster truck. Whoops. All right, so what I was doing there was specifically getting that knuckle to seat down in there nice and tight. But you can see when I've drooped this all the way back down, this high-low is now loose again. Now, as I mentioned before, we were fully loose so that we could get that in there really nicely and adjust our ride height. But depending on the set of high-lows that you have, some might need to be adjusted out to take out the looseness in this suspension system as a kind of baseline setting. So I've tossed you guys down underneath the car and kind of on the back side of our subframe here. And you can see the looseness that I'm talking about here. Now this is pretty easy to remedy. You just need to wind this nut out until it takes up all of the slack. So make sure that that cone is fully seated around the kind of like retainer that it has and start cranking this out. Now we just wanna set kind of a baseline setting and that is right about there. That will get us at least to where our cone is not gonna come out if the car is ever at full droop. There we go. Now this part you can usually do by hand, but after that, you're gonna have to get in there with a wrench. So you can see, no more looseness, nice and tight. And with that, we're gonna be able to drop the car down, measure the ride height, and get it all adjusted. So the next step is to do this on the other side of the rear. I'm gonna leave that out since you guys have just seen how we do it here. Let's go ahead and jump up to the front of the car and I'm gonna show you guys how to do a front suspension cone 
which is definitely the more complicated of the two. All right, so now that we have the rears replaced, it's time to tackle the fronts. And the front is where it gets interesting and a little bit more complicated. Now you might notice I'm holding something kind of unusual looking. It's a multi-part tool, and this is what's called a cone compressor. Now the purpose of this tool and any tool that is similar to this is to go in through your subframe, basically right down here in the engine bay. That's why the bonnet is lifted. This is gonna go down into and screw into the existing cone. And then we're gonna torque this and we're gonna tighten it to lift that cone up so that it can actually come loose from the high-low that's in the front or rather the front trumpet but it's also going to allow you to more easily remove this out of the front of the car. Now, like I said, this is gonna be the harder part of the job, but we're gonna get through it. It's not gonna be too bad, I promise. We'll get all of this done. And this cone compressor is pretty straightforward, but I'm gonna swing over to you guys so you can see exactly how this works. Now, what we have here is our old cone, and you can see in the top of the cone, there's actually a threaded nut. This is what the kind of OEM style cones look like. They have a nut that's kind of lifted and raised out of there. Now the Evo cones are pretty similar. However, that threaded bit is in a flush bit inside the cone. Now you have two ends to your spring compressor here or your cone compressor. Um, the, th the smaller threaded end, this is the end that's gonna go down into the cone. And then the top end, this is where this big nut lives, and that's what you're gonna be torquing to pull the cone up, which is going to be squishing that cone and compressing it. So, first things first, let's go ahead and get this undone so that we can take our sleeve off of this, just like that. And then on the top side, we're gonna take this nut off as well. I usually leave all of this stuff connected so I don't lose any of it, so that comes off. Now. We're left with our basic rod here. This is what's gonna go down into the top subframe hole and you know, actually allow you to compress that cone. But before we get into that, let's get this wheel off and let's get kind of access to everything so you can see what we're looking at down here and get a better understanding of how this is gonna go together. Okay, so here we have the front end of the car. More specifically, we have the front suspension of the car. Now you can see we have a shock absorber here, just like we did on the rear, and we have something called a top arm right here. Now we're gonna need to remove a few things in order to get this cone out. First thing, shock absorber. Second thing, this lower bump stop that goes underneath the top arm. And then hopefully, when we compress that cone, it'll give us enough room to get everything out of there. However, there are some scenarios where you have to kind of reach in here and or re reach in here and unbolt the top arm, slide that out of the way so that you can get that cone and that actual trumpet out. Now, I really don't wanna do that. I'm hoping I don't have to do that, but we'll see how it goes. First things first, let's go ahead and get this shock absorber off. We'll need to disconnect it from the top and the bottom, and then we can move on to the next step. Now, you're gonna see me, I'm gonna go ahead and put both pieces of this cone compressor down into place, because you're not gonna be able to slide that sleeve over if you've got your um, hood on. So, something to keep in mind. Now, you saw me run that down pretty far. And the reason you do that is you want as much of this cone compressor to grab those threads on the cone itself. Otherwise, you run the risk of stripping out those threads. And let me, tr and let me tell you, when you do that, you're in for a bad, bad day. So now we will go ahead and put our tightening nut down and all that's left is coming in here with a wrench and tightening that down until we start to pull loose our cone. Fuck this cone. 
All right, and with a little bit of elbow grease, you will be gifted one stock trumpet. Now that's what that original trumpet looks like. And this still has tension on it. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen that back up slowly but surely. And I do wanna warn you, just happened to me, and I forgot that it does this, is this likes to collect debris inside it. And when you fling it out, it flings that debris all over you. Um, would not recommend. Now you may have noticed that the hood is off of the car. And that is unfortunately because I needed an impact wrench in order to get the nut off of the top of this here. Um, once it started to have that tension on it, both the rod and the nut wanted to spin. So I needed to get a, get a wrench down in there. So we'll get that off. And we will go ahead and de-thread this. And actually before we do, or after we do really, go ahead and take this rod and you'll feel it after you've unthreaded it. Just thread it back in just a bit. And we're gonna go ahead and take our hammer. There we go. And then that will actually make the cone come loose down there, um, which we want. We need to be able to get it out from the underside. So now that comes out and we can jump back down to the top arm and get that cone out. So unfortunately, the cone does not want to come out. Once they get sandwiched, you know, once they actually get compressed really far, it ends up being really difficult to kind of get this out through this gap here. I mean, like nearly impossible. And so what we'll have to do is loosen up the nuts on the ends of these here. Now this gets kind of difficult because you have to do this underneath the front radiator on this side. The other side is over on the clutch side. You have a little bit more room. But let me show you guys on my subframe that's out of the car so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so for those of you who have never had to film anything before, I started a film actually disassembling the top arm and the beam that goes through there um, on the pickup, but unfortunately it is nearly impossible to get any sort of good view in there. So I thought I might take the opportunity to, while I have this spare subframe, the one that goes in Bad Wolf, out, I can show you exactly what I did. So as you can see here, we've got our top arm, and then the three nuts and bolts that go into and hold this plate into the subframe itself. And then on the back side, you have another one of these nuts right here that will need to be loosened. Now, in order to do this and in order to be able to get the cone out, so your cone would be living where the spring is right here, that needs to go out through this void right here. And the top arm has to come loose and come down so that you can get that out. So conceptually speaking, it's pretty straightforward, but in practice, it's very difficult to get to these two bolts and this nut, as well as the one in the rear. Now, depending on the year, this nut might be different sizes, but essentially what needs to happen is you'll want to come in from the front of the car and with a really long extension, come forward and unbolt and loosen this nut right here or this bolt. Then this other bolt right here, you should be able to get to from the side of the car here. Um, but if you cannot, you might have a inner wing that is blocking it. And if you do, some people decide to bend that up so you can get to it, or you can get a little kind of universal joint here to get into that bolt. Totally up to you. Uh, in my experience, I usually go ahead and bend it up because I can bend that metal back down. Um, I just find it's a little bit easier. And in some cars, you do have a little window right here, which is really used to replace your caliper line. But in some scenarios, you can use it for this too. Then as far as getting this nut out, this is the part where bending that inner wing does tend to be the easier way. So you can get your wrench in here and loosen that up. Now this doesn't have to come super loose. In fact, you can leave this one essentially pretty much fully tightened because this plate will allow all of it to come loose as you loosen the nut that is on the back side of your subframe that looks just like this. So as we look at the back side here, you can see this nut and while the subframe is out, it's super easy to access. But when the subframe is in the car, this is essentially like three millimeters away from touching the body of the car. So as you loosen this, the shaft needs to be moving out, which means it needs to be going towards the front of the car and moving away. So you start with the front bolts and nuts, then you come to this one here, loosen it, push it, loosen it, 
push it and that's going to allow that shaft to slide out and then once it's totally free you're going to be able to take this top arm and kind of lean it out of the way which will then give you access to pull the cone out. Now I know that's a lot of steps and this is one of the reasons why people do this job while the subframes are out but it's totally possible with the subframe in the car and that's why we're doing it today. So now you've got a good view in here and you can see I've got the cone out that already came out with the top arm out of the way. You can see the shaft is free to move around, which allowed us to move the top arm out. The cone has free motion to go in and out. Um, it's still kind of a, a stretch and a wiggle to get it in there. Um, but this is one of the fully compressed cones, which also is going to make it a little bit harder. So once that's out of the way, we can take our new suspension cone and put that in. So while we have that apart, it is a good opportunity to go ahead and take a look at everything here. You can see there's a lot of gunk and dust and stuff. We're going to suck all that out, get the vacuum out here and clean it. And then we're also going to clean up the shaft here so that we can uh, re-grease that and get it nice and moving smoothly. And then we're going to repeat all these steps on the other side. Now the last thing that we're going to do here is put this new cone in place and in order to do that we'll have to negotiate these spaces here and get that up into place and then what I do is I use the cone compressor that we used to, to take the old one out. We're going to thread it in from the top so this is going to take a little bit of balancing work. We're going to thread that in and that's going to hold the cone in place which is important because we want it fully seated in our subframe and then we're going to be able to put our high-low in place. We're going to crank that all the way down so there's lots of room for us to work. And then the nuts and bolts all go back in. So basically a reverse of what we just did. Now one other thing that I forgot to mention before is we are also going to be replacing the nylon cup here. The removal process is the exact same way we did it before. And in fact, it's a little bit easier because with this out, we can put this in the bench vise, yank that out, and then we're going to be able to just press in the new one for the new high lows and service that part as well. So unfortunately we ran into a bit of a snag with the installation and the cone compressor while working on and operating the way it should, um, the Evo cone threads, the threads that are in the cone itself, are basically made out of paper mache and instantly stripped those threads out. So as a result we were unable to actually compress that cone and in order to get these installed with the new high lows and the new trumpets, we actually had to install the knuckle, the trumpet, and the top arm all in one swoop. We slided it into place and then ran the shaft through to uh, fit everything in. It's a very frustrating and difficult way to do this, and unfortunately I also did not catch it on film. Um, it took me much longer, and the benefit of doing this once over here is that those threads also stripped on the other side of the car, so I had to do it twice. Um, Long story short, the Evo cones, while riding very nicely, the threads inside them, again, are not very good, so you are going to want to keep an eye out for that when you take, the, take on this job. Um, otherwise, everything went into place, and we are ready to roll. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that is going to wrap up this episode of Classic Mini DIY. It was a pretty exciting one. We did obviously run into issues with the Evo cones and the threading in those cones. Uh, it's really disappointing that those uprated and updated cones still have you know, these, these issues with them that arguably should be solved in like a non-issue. So very frustrating situation to be in, but I took the car out for a drive and it drives absolutely wonderfully. It's very comfortable. The ride is basically what you'd expect out of a brand new set of cones and everything is looking pretty good. Now, if you guys have any questions about what we did in this episode, please feel free to post those in the comment section below. 
This is one of those jobs that has a lot of nuance in it. And while I had these experiences while I was installing this and showing you guys how to do it, you might have a different experience as you are going through your car and I'd love to help you out with that. Now, the only other thing that I do wanna mention is that this job is a really good job to get started and expect to take multiple days doing it. If you work in a shop, maybe you have a lift or you have some professional tooling or something like that, you probably can get this done within a few hours, maybe three to four hours or within a day. But for most of us, I think that it is easier to span this job out over multiple days, take on the rear first, then move to the front, you're gonna be much happier. It'll allow you to take a break, and I know if you do have a space where you can do that, you'll thank yourself later. So thank you everyone for tuning in. I really appreciate you watching, and again, if you have any questions at all, post them in the comment section below. But until I see you on the next episode, you guys know the drill. Enjoy those minis, and motor on. Catch you on the next one.